so the first question is which of the following factors will cause falsely low reading on the value of pulse oximetry except so this is a question regarding the factors affecting pulse oximetry reading and we can always divide the factors affecting pulse oximetry reading into three parts factors causing increase in the reading factors causing decrease in the reading and factors that have no effect on the reading when i say factors causing increase in the reading that means false high reading actual o2 saturation is less but what you get on the monitor is higher false low reading is decrease in the reading right so there is thankfully only one example carboxyhemoglobin cohb where there is increase in the reading that means that the actual o2 saturation is less that means the patient has hypoxia but what you see on the pulse ox monitor is 100 percent saturation right so this is what it means by increase in reading now decrease in reading or falsely low reading is seen in multiple conditions most of which is related to some sort of decreased perfusion in the periphery or use of some dyes so methemoglobinemia causes a fixed o2 saturation of 85 percent a dye called methylene blue when used causes maximum decrease in the oxygen saturation and it goes to 65 percent then a dye endocyanin green or endocarmine dyes they all decrease the o2 saturation then peripheral vasoconstructive states like shock and hypotension will eventually decrease the peripheral perfusion and decrease the reading. Shivering causes decreased oxygen saturation on the monitor. Badly positioned probe or motion. Nail paints maximum by dark blue, purple or black and anemia. All these conditions decrease the reading of pulse oximeter. While certain conditions where would we would expect that the readings would change but they have no effect like skin pigmentation has no role self hemoglobin different types of hemoglobin like hemoglobin f h or s jaundice that is hyperbilirubinemia fluorocene dye acrylic fingernails henna or mehndi which is commonly used in india and polycythemia all these have no effect on the o2 saturation right so this is a very very important table last year we got one question both in aims november and pgi november from this topic so it is a very 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 important question right so the correct answer to this question is severely jaundiced skin where there will be no falsely low reading badly positioned probe will decrease black nail paint will decrease hypotension will decrease but severely jaundiced skin or jaundice will not affect the pulse oximeter readings okay now next is again an image based question identify the image so what does it look like if you see there is a guy who is pressing on the lower one third of the sternum or on the chest and you can see that there are two uh, pads attached on the chest so this is a typical scenario of cardiac arrest who is being given CPR and we know CPR contains three things in the order C, A, V. C is compressions. A is airway. And B is breathing. Right? So compression, airway and breathing. So this looks like a chest compression precordial examination out of question checking for responsiveness is done by tapping on the shoulder of the patient tapping on the shoulder of the patient and defibrillation in defibrillation you will not touch the patient so if you say that sir the pads are attached why can't it be defibrillation because somebody is touching the patient in defibrillation you do not touch the patient you clear the patient and then you press the shock button to deliver the shock right so that is why this is not a case of defibrillation this is chest compression let's see about chest compression and a high quality chest compression has following criteria the rescuer should perform it at a rate of 100 to 120 per minute 
not less than 100 not more than 120 depth should be at least 2 inches not less than 2 not more than 2.4 inches adult full chest recoil that means do not lean over the patient during chest compression minimize pauses in the compression that is interrupt compressions greater than 10 seconds and ventilate adequately that means if you are using uh, if you do not have a secure airway then you do it 30 is to 2 that is 30 compressions followed by two breaths but if you have a secured airway then one breath every 5 to 6 seconds so that means 10 to 12 breaths per minute okay so you have to basically avoid excessive ventilation right so this is how you perform high quality cpr right Chalo, next question a 32 year old parchirant okay with a history of spinal fusion severe asthma hypertension okay so a lot of problems current blood pressure 180 by 110 is brought to operating room wheezing so she is having asthmatic attack she needs emergency cesarean section under general anesthesia for prolapsed umbilical cord so okay we don't have to worry they have already told us general why in spinal fusion you cannot perform a subarachnoid block which of the following induction agents would be most appropriate for her induction so let's see the problems with the patient spinal fusion asthma hypertension bp is higher let's see the options co Midas get propofol. Now, out of this, would you use midazolam for induction of anesthesia? No. Slow in onset. So, never used for induction. So, that leaves it with CO, ket, and propofol. Now, can CO be used as induction agent? Yes. Can ketamine? Yes. Can propofol? Yes. Now, the patient is having asthma with wheezing. So, one would want to give a drug that will cause maximum bronchodilation. The answer to that is ketamine. Maximum bronchodilation, right? So, obviously, you would want to give ketamine. But at the same time, the patient is hypertensive with a blood pressure of 180 by 110. Will you give ketamine? No, because ketamine will increase heart rate and increase blood pressure. So, the next best option would be propofol sevoflurane right but you are to do a emergency cesarean section and an emergency cesarean section you do not want to give a inhalational induction because you want a faster induction right so the best option here would be propofol which will be good for asthma and will also decrease bp and will also be able to help in rsi so the best answer here is propofol okay <clears throat> now next question select the false statement regarding spinal anatomy and spinal anesthesia right spinal anatomy and spinal anesthesia and the false statement so the addition of epinephrine to lignocaine will prolong spinal anesthesia High thoracic sensory block will result in total sympathetic blockade. Tuffier line passes through body of L4 and spinal cord extends to L1 in infant and L3 in adults. So all the four options look very very correct to me. Lignocaine addition of epinephrine yes will prolong high thoracic sensory block that means block above T4 can lead to total sympathetic blockade. Why? Because the sympathetic blockade is from T1 to L3. So, if the block goes above T1, then yes, there will be total sympathetic blockade. Tuffier's line passes through body of L4 vertebra. Yes, Tuffier's line. Tuffier's line is formed by joining the highest points of iliac crest. And this corresponds to either body of L4 or intervertebral space between L4, L5. 
intervertebral space between L4 and L5. So is this a correct statement? Yes, Stoffier's line passes through body of L4 vertebra. Now the final statement, spinal cord extends to L1 in infants and L3 in adults, which also appears to be correct and I am pretty sure most of you would have thought that it is correct. But look at what they have asked, L1 in infant, L3 in adult, while what happens exactly, the spinal cord because is a, is a thing that has a constant length to begin with therefore is at a lower level in the infants that is upper border of L3 while as a person grows the spinal cord the vertebral canal stretches and the spinal cord moves up so in adults it is lower border of L1 and therefore the correct answer to this question is spinal cord extends to L1 in infants and L3 in adults right so there is a slight difference and if we are not reading the question properly then we are we tend to miss these smaller points so always remember you have to read the question properly and read all the options before you go on and mark something because you would feel that yes this is the right answer and i need to mark this because yo this is so easy and most of the time we make mistake in the easy questions right let's move on to the next question now abrupt and large increase in delivered concentration of which of the following inhalational agent may produce transient increase in bp and heart rate so abrupt and large increases in delivered concentration so you have to give a large concentration so it cannot be used for an agent that has a high potency then inhalational agent of course transient increase in sbp and heart rate correct answer to this question is desflurane now isoflurane decreases bp and increases heart rate sevoflurane decreases bp doesn't change heart rate while nitrous oxide is cardio stable so no change in heart rate and bp now desflurane is also a myocardial depressant It is also a myocardial depressant. That means it will also decrease cardiac output. But because of its pungency, when we give it immediately in large quantities, then it causes transient increase in heart rate and increase in BP which later then settles and actually starts to fall. So this is desflurane because it is most pungent inhaled anesthetic agent. Most pungent inhaled anesthetic agent. Okay. So the correct answer to this question is desflurane. Next is a simple question. Most common nerve injured during anesthesia. The answer to this is ulnar nerve. Right. Ulnar nerve is the most common nerve injured during anesthesia most common lower limb nerve injured during anesthesia is common peroneum okay so this is something that you have to remember ulnar nerve is most common injured nerve during anesthesia and the lower limb most common injured nerve is common peroneum Next question, differences in which of the following local anesthetic property accounts for the fact that onset of epidural block with 3% to chloroprocaine is more rapid than 2% lignocaine, right? So now we know that the onset of action of a local anesthetic is dependent on a factor called as pKa, which is the pH at which 50% of drug is unionized. 50% of drug is unionized. Now we know for a fact that any local anesthetic with pKa near physiological pH will be faster in onset. Why? Because more amount of drug will be unionized. 
more drug will be unionized. But chloroprocaine has highest pK and still it is fastest in onset and the reason for this is the concentration because chloroprocaine is a low potency agent so it is used in higher concentration higher concentration means more number of molecules so faster in onset faster in onset right so the property here that is causing this 3% chloroprocaine to be faster than 2% lignocaine is concentration but suppose we have taken 3% lignocaine and 3% chloroprocaine then yes lignocaine would be faster in onset why because then the pka factor will ha have a more important effect on the onset of action all right so this is about the pharmacokinetic property of local anesthetic now which of the following is a part of intermediate pressure system intermediate pressure system flow meter first pressure reducing wall common gas outlet and oxygen flush valve now i know the classification based on pressure system is little tricky to remember but in this question you don't even have to remember that classification because we know for a fact that o2 flush is a part of intermediate pressure system and this o2 flush when we press this button then there is uninterrupted flow of 100% oxygen from common gas outlet at 35 to 75 liters per minute right now this bypasses the vaporizer because it is emergency oxygen supply and therefore it is devoid of anesthetic agent and therefore major complication is barotrauma because of high flow and intraoperative awareness because it is non anesthetic there is no anesthetic dissolve in this oxygen so the patient suddenly becomes light in anesthesia and starts experiencing what is going on called as intraoperative awareness right 